D Smart. Hello. 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 If you were to play an album for your art, what kind of music would you play for it? I think my uh, my first love uh, is uh, Pretenders. Oh, yeah. yeah, Chrissy. Chrissy. I, I just, yeah, that's it. She's kind of, you know, the first real rock woman. Yeah. I know it's odd because, you know, there's my watercolours that are kind of yeah. very soft and floaty, but there's a lot of rock right. behind yeah. it. <laughs> When did you first notice your art? I reckon kindy. I, you know, probably the only institution that I liked. It was because it was all just painting, Creative. and I thought this is the best thing ever. And then, of course, you get to school, and it's kind of all taken away. And what well, you get this one hour, you know, designated art. It's like sucks. So yeah, I think kindy, like I was like, wow. I knew creativity was my lane then. Yeah. And everything else was just bleh. Yeah. And as an adult, yeah. when you came back to art, was it hot and fast or was it a slow burn? Look, uh, a very slow burn. Um, I think from... I mean, can I tell you from when yeah. younger? Like, Please it's do. quite a because yeah. I have never not been an artist. Okay. So when you know that's been the love of my life. Yeah. Never ever have I swayed. I've never had a real job, like ever. I love that. Yeah. Uh, you know, <laughs> real not, job. You've had to, like you so have. Yeah. Like they've yeah. always been creative. Yeah. yeah. So I feel like you know my first. Um, uh, real, uh, where I found that lane again yeah. was uh, dance. You know, I saw a, um, I, I lived in South Australia in the country and there was, I was in the butcher with my mum and there was a, a notice up on the wall saying ballet classes. And I was just, mum, 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 mum. So ballet became my first, oh my God, I can lose myself here. You know, where you're just out. And so that that was a fast, hard burn. That yeah. was just like, that's what I want to do. Yeah. And then I, of course, went to, uh, I, I went full time yeah. when I was 15. So I went down to the city and so I committed yep. to it then. You're in. I said, that's it. That's, that's, I'm here. And then I went to Melbourne on a train and auditioned for VCA and got in there. So I didn't expect to get in. I thought I'd have to do at least two years of full-time dance to kind of get in there, but I was accepted. So it was kind of like, I have to go. So at, you know, 16, I was packed up and went down, uh, up, down. Across, to, down, around. Across, okay. down and around, <laughs> just colder. Let's just say it was freaking cold. cold. And, um, so that was, uh, so yeah, that was my first okay. fast. And because it was, you know, just so physical, I mm. loved expressing myself with my body. Yeah. Um, so that was probably my most passionate um, of uh, my art lover. Yeah. And then, of course, you know, at VCA, there was the dance school that I was in and then the art school and then the drama school. Yeah. So... I would go and watch the plays and go, look at that. They can talk too. They move and they talk. So I was like, that's even better. <laughs> and then I'd go and uh, model for the art school. You know, you just yep. as a dancer, you get 20 bucks. And, and I'd be sitting there with the, standing there, and I'd watch them all and it would be just so, just deathly quiet and everyone's so serious it was like everyone was just so and I was going this looks so fucking boring <laughs> who could have the patience to do that and I knew I could draw like I just always could okay. but I had I thought what there's more to life there's more to life <laughs> I want to move I want to shake I want to talk I want to you know I, I, I want to communicate and so then I went I'm going to Melbourne to study acting. Now, I never committed to it. I thought, I'm just going to, um, I'm 
going to find out what it is. What is it? There's, there's, I, I want to learn about it. I want to, I, know, I want to know what the method is. What is it an art form that I would love to be involved in? Because it's something you could do for, for the rest of your life. Yeah. Whereas dance was like, it's oh, yeah, very... Okay. Hard on the body. You, yeah. Is there a kind of... Yeah. And yeah. this was just a bit more intellectual too, because you could use your voice. And there's so many layers to a script and character building and, and how do you, you know, become all these different types of, and then you're still using your body. So I think that was the peak of my uh, love affair, my, my creative lover. Yeah. Because it was all encompassing. Mm. I got to use the energy and the passion and uh, and the intellect of of working together mm. with a director, uh, you know, makeup, wardrobe, with you know, a whole crew to create a story, um, and uh, <laughs> anyway, so many crazy things I did there, um, and then I guess I had children, yeah. and then all of a sudden my lover kind of had no place and it was devastating oh. you know oh i feel i because my next question was like how long was it before you committed and i guess in this art piece, form, in this art form yeah, yes for the for the actual at the easel art yes let's say how long were you dating at the easel before you committed the visual yeah well again it, it, it was such a slow side to our relationship because I mean I'm you know I'm too old I'm too ugly to fucking worry about being up oh, myself no you're not but do you like... know what I've just always been able to draw yeah I've, okay. it's just yeah in me I can yeah. I can just do it and I gotta say when I was 15 I, I had this teacher Mrs Young and um she spent you know that you know you have that you know little period of art you have once a week and it was the only time i enjoyed school she spent the entire class with a big brush and a bucket of black paint and all this butcher's paper and she said you've got to make one line like one line <laughs> half the classes <laughs> can we just, we'll just, yeah. You know, but I was mesmerized because I so got it. It was like the energy from the moment you made the decision that you were going to make that line, the energy behind that before you even got to the paper had a momentum. And that momentum had to finish the whole way through. Now you could either have something where you weren't sure and if that came through it would come through in the line yeah, yeah. and if it was strong from beginning to the end you know that that to me that was like uh, freedom that was you were lost in it or you know you were nervous and then you got a bit embarrassed you could see it in one line. And I, it was a moment where oh, I fucking love this. I love this. I love line. I love what it can express. Yeah. So after that, and she was just a magnif. I've never seen her since. Oh, I, I, I know. Say, I can't. Ever seen no. Oh. Uh, I've mentioned her name many times, but I, I, I'm really, you I know, she her. was it for me. Is when I fell in love. Really fell in love with. Uh, the visual arts and I got it and from that moment she she taught me how drawing and how to um, uh, measure properly and and loosely and um, so for someone like me who's I'm just a good drawer that's just the way it is yeah. so to get that from her it that's when I fell in love mm. but I still didn't have the patience because then I went into dancing and then I went into acting but all the way along I dabble but I could never had the patience because I knew you had to spend a fucking long time you have to do it every day you have to and you're on your own yes 
So I think with the baby, when I had babies yeah. <clears throat> and there was no going to acting, I mean, you know, your boobs, you got no, you're tired, you're exhausted. What do you do? And, and that lover was leaving me and it was dreadful, dreadful. So I literally just created something whenever the baby went to sleep, I would just start drawing something on the table. And it was not easy, it, start, it was frustrating. And then the baby cries, you've got to stop. So it was even more pressure. But I found my process. That's how I found my process. Because I had to stop, and then I had to put it away. So then after, you know, six months or so, I had a little corner where I'd leave the, you know, thing. I had a tiny, it was my studio, you yeah. see. I didn't even know then, but yes, it was, was the studio. studio yeah. So I would come back to that you know picture that I started the next day and go oh I see what I did there and I can see where I got tired I can see where I was being a wanker where I can see where you know that was an honest fucking line that was really cool let's get back in that lane baby go to sleep yep. and go back and doing that for three years I I found my craft, I found how to do it and it was, and I had a little exhibition and then I just couldn't stop because that was, I knew, I, I did try to go back to the lover without the art, like the, you know, the moving and the shaking and I tried to do more auditions because the passion and, you know. The on intensity, the heat of it. Yes, yes. the intensity <laughs> and adrenaline on a set yes. between action and cut, there's nothing else. Yeah. It's just, yeah. it's extraordinary. Yeah. Uh, you know, that sort of energy is really addictive. As exhausting as it is, to actually get everything right and show the layers of a human being and communicate that without anyone knowing you are. Ah, <sighs> nothing better. So I, try, I did try and go you back, doubled. but you know, you either have to commit to one or the other. And so I sort of, you know, was still just pushing away and drawing and drawing and drawing and drawing and drawing and drawing and, drawing and then uh, painting, uh, then I just started painting uh, people's kids, actually. That's oh. kind of how I started on portraiture. Yeah. And actually, yeah, t painted my own kids and then painted other people's kids. And then painted Johnny MacArthur. Oh. I said, can I paint you? And I'll put it in Archibald. I know. <laughs> it was an epic painting. I loved it so much. So how did you... I mean, other than giving yeah. it time, how did you woo your visual arts? Yeah, to get back in the good yeah, box? terrible, terrible. Yeah, um, just you know, saying you know, it, it's like a almost being really humble and admitting that you're at the bottom of the heap now. Okay, you knew how to act, you knew how to dance, and it came quite naturally. And it was, well, I studied for a long time, but it, it came very naturally. There's nothing, it, yes, you can just draw, but unless you do it and do it and do it, it doesn't evolve, it, yeah. it just doesn't. So I had to woo it slowly back with the uh, smaller periods of time so I didn't exhaust myself too, because it's actually the, one of the most exhausting art forms. Because you're you, so. yeah, and you're on your own, so mm. you're in your own creativity, working out not only what you want to say and what you want to feel and what you're trying to, uh, you know, do with line and technique and everything. That's ex that takes a lot of energy. You, you know, you may not be moving and you know, uh, physically exerting. Well, sometimes you are too, but it's so much intense. I mean, I have to have an alarm on my clock to say move. Oh, otherwise, right. okay. otherwise, otherwise I'll get like... stuck in it. <laughs> You're like, I've been like this for hours now. Um, yeah. What yeah. did you have to give up when you committed to your art? visual art? Well, it sounds like the, the dancing and the acting. Absolutely nothing. Absolutely nothing. I, I, um, I think my 
a love affair with my art, if I look at it through um, the different phases, I've never cheated on it as such. Like, it's always been there, but it's just morphed and, and phased into uh, the way I have, how I've aged, you know. When I was young, I couldn't keep still. I, w I would have been diagnosed ADD, B D F G Q, whatever, because I was so hyperactive, so hyperactive and I needed to move and dance. And and then we went into the more intellectual with the physicality. And then and the, slowed it down. When I was ready, I could sit and have patience. So, you know, I am just so grateful to this lover that has been so patient with me, and just take gone on a ride with me and it's just followed my body followed where I'm at and I have had to woo it back at the end because I did lose it for a bit um, How did you know you'd lost it? Uh, because I was so fucking depressed <laughs> <laughs> Where is Sorry. my lover? Where is my lover? Come back to me Okay, okay and so yeah. then you had to yeah. woo it back Yeah, yeah. I think, you know, I, I've been, you know, in that artistic realm my whole life. Like, yeah. you know, I might have been a waitress a bit and I was the worst waitress in the world, but, you know, I've only ever done things to make money to for this. What's the craziest thing you've done for your art? Oh, my God. <laughs> so many. Which, where, how? Um, you mean top three? If there's top three? <laughs> Um, that kind of falls under the cheating category almost, I think. So at dance school, um, they, for money, they would come and say, anyone want to do the football on the weekend? Like, cheer girls. Do it. That's, that's smart, D. It is smart, D. Thank you. And, uh, you know, I, it, w it, <laughs> it, was for, it was hysterical. Going under that grandstand, on a grand final, the noise is like, it's like the Colosseum. You're in Rome and the noise, I was just like, oh my God, what the hell? And you know, we had, you had all the gear on, you learnt the thing that week and you just went on and you did your, you know, your pom-poms and your thing and you're going, okay, 20 bucks, 20 bucks, 20 bucks, 20 bucks, fantastic. I remember looking up at the screen, you know, which is massive and there's a, me, going down and then on my ass as I'm doing it. I'm going, just please dear God, please dear God, don't let mum and dad be watching. <gasps> <laughs> <laughs> so that's kind of crazy. That's, that's crazy. kind of crazy. Yeah. Um, I did a really heavy, heavy handed play uh, where I was nude, had to walk. Uh, the play was a two-hander with Peter Phelps. Okay. And I had two, the it, it, lights come up, it's all set in a uh, hotel room. Okay. And Peter Phelps and I are in bed and I basically get out of bed and walk across the stage nude and have a shower. Oh, and, um, for everyone? In front of everybody, <laughs> yeah. And one of my parents came. Oh, hi mum and dad. Mum and dad. Hi. I mean, seriously Catholic. We went to Mass every day before school. My dad, like nine children, he is so Catholic. Like, you don't even talk about sex. You don't, you don't have sex before marriage. There's his daughter. And there's one section where Peter Phelps and I go into this romance, this go into a kiss. I've got a robe on. And he's, sorry, Mike, he slips my robe off and I'm nude and we go into this embrace and it goes down to the ground and rolls down onto the ground and I roll on top of him and the lights fade. I'm side of stage, knowing my mum and dad are out in the audience, I've got a bucket and I'm just like... <laughs> 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 Because I'm terrified. Oh I'm absolutely God. fucking terrified. Um, but we got to that bit and Phelps, he just says, keep your robe on. I go, oh, in his ear, I go, fucking love you. Oh, nice fucking man. Love you. Yeah. So he let me do yeah. that. Nice man. Yeah. Also in that play, uh, there was a gun and I end up shooting uh, Peter Phelps on stage and it cuts to black. We go over, to, I go over to get the gun. There's no gun set, they didn't set it. <laughs> what do you do? So I'm looking at him, he's looking at me, we're both going. 
and we sort of get closer to each other and he just goes, strangle me, strangle me. I was thinking, what's like the, what can you kill without a strangle? Oh my God. So much fun in theatre. So much uh, fun in theatre. So I, how does the visual arts keep you in? In? Um, you know what? I th it took me a long time because it is slower. There's, you're on your own. Um, I think the excitement is when, when you've put the time in and you're getting more capable of getting, expressing your, your, your technique is matching what you want to say. It's so exciting and you can do it on your own, in your own time. You don't need a crew, you don't need any, but you don't need another person, not one. So you can go in and do it whenever you want. And that to me, that's a dream. Mm. That's a dream. That's an absolute dream. I love, you know, the drama I think comes out in my paintings. I, you know, I love a story. I love, you know, I love people. I love, you know, getting in those eyes and, you know, I am, yeah. That's how it kind of lures you. Yeah. You in. Yeah. And the fact, I wouldn't go back to a set if you paid me. I just love this energy now. It's just, you do it on your own terms. You walk in, your headphones are on, you're in your rock and roll lane and, uh, yeah, Anytime you want, there's, you know, yeah, I, it's so bizarre, I think, that I was trying to fight it. This is the best lover ever. Oh, that's so nice. I know. That is so I know. nice. Okay, yeah. so what's your top tip then for keeping the passion alive in the studio? you got to put out. <laughs> <laughs> was it, who was the, um, there was like a social commentator who was like, ladies just need to lie back and yeah, let it happen. Yeah, well, get what on top. Um, yeah. Oh, God. Uh, yeah. yeah, you got to put out, you do. Yeah. Um, no, you just got to turn up and, and uh, set up, mm. set up, set up and turn up. And turn you, up. Like, have the space. Set and yourself, set up. yourself up. Se always set up. And if you leave and you're feeling shit out, set up for the next day before you leave. So you walk in and you go, okay, you just, the train's going on the tracks, it doesn't have to stop. You don't have to go, what, you're fresh in the morning, you go straight, set up, set up, set up. And that's half of it, you know. I think having everything right in your space, knowing where you're going, Okay, that didn't work today or whatever, that needs fixing. That's a naughty painting that can go sit in the naughty corner. This is sort of that set up so that when the next morning you come in, it's easier for yourself. Make it as easy as possible. Yeah, make your space beautiful. Set yeah. up your space, give it the time. Turn up. And turn up. Just turn up. And even if it's shit, then it was meant to be shit. You know, I did um, Johnny MacArthur painting. So I did everything until the knitting and I was going, I was nervous. I was just going, it's the hardest bit. I did everything else so I would have to do it and really have to do it because, you know, and I'm going, it's going to drive me insane, all that knitting. And it, because he's a knitter, you can't just have a normal, it's got to be a cable knit thing. And God, that's a long a few years back now. But. Yeah, 2017, I think it was. Oh, well. I, know. I was wow. looking at it today again ah. because I was like going, what was the first Dean Smart painting that I saw and was like, yeah. I love that. Yeah. yeah. Well, I actually painted him without the knitting because I just love his face. And then I just said, get out of here. Get your big girl pants on and get him knitting. Like, really? So then we say, and we've got knitting. And, blah, blah. and so then to paint the knitting, um, I started and I went, oh my God, this is so easy. How do I know this? And it was, it was from a painting that didn't work. None of it worked. And I put so much time and effort and it really hurts sometimes when you've put so much time and it's just not going to work and you know it, it's gone. But I thought, how do I know this? But because it was that one section of that painting that I was able to do that. So nothing is ever lost. Every shit thing you do, there's something you learn. And it's, that's, that's, you know, another beautiful thing about 
this process of making art. Yeah. Yeah, even when you screw something up, there's something about that that stays, comes into your being, and you'll come across it again later and you go, oh, wow, I know how to do that. d I feel like you and your lover have many years to come. Yeah, oh, yeah, we do. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us today. <laughs> Thank you, Elamina. Thank you so much.